Hello and welcome to A Part to Gather. I'm Patrick Corbin, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm an associate professor of practice at the USC Kaufman School of Dance. And uh, today we have with us Michaela Taylor, who is our audit artist in residence and working with our freshman class. Hi, Michaela. Hello. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Um, I know that you've just been in London working with Ron Bear Company. What was that experience like? It was great. You know, I really had the time and the focus to really cultivate something amazing because London is still in lockdown. So I, I had a lot of moments just to relax and focus on the creativity, which is great. So it was very essential. So, Were you in the studio with dancers or were you still working remotely even though you were in London? So both, because the first week I was in quarantine, I worked virtually through Zoom, and then the rest of the residency, the last three weeks, I worked in person in studio with all of the precautions, of course, mask, COVID test, social distancing in studio. So it was it was unique but awesome. What what a world! So I wanna wanna ask you a couple of things about that. So um, when you're working with companies world-class companies like uh, Rombear, um, it's a different story than working with your own company because um, I'm only aware of you dancing in your own work. So what is it like taking the jump from being a dancer choreographer in your own work to commissions on other companies? Well, you know, wearing so many different hats. When I'm working with TL, I'm thinking, you know, what does this mean artistic, you know, as an artistic director, as a performer in the work. So it definitely does stretch me um, when working with my own company, just because I'm thinking about building my stamina and all the different things. Working with other companies, I really can take a step back and look at it from the outside and, and see what is it that I'm saying? What, what, what is the story? What is the narrative? Which is something that I've been pushing more and more as I develop as a choreographer. And so still wearing many different hats, but feeling very supported with a world-class dance company like Ron Bear, who has so many people on the team and you know had production meetings where they have a lighting designer, they have all of the stage production you know individuals who handle the 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 props and just so many factors are taken care of as far as working with a company of that magnitude so i really um those that probably is the main difference i can focus more so on the creativity when working with ron bear whereas with tl i'm focusing on creativity my body physically all of it so and, yeah. and stepping in and out of the uh, voyeur and the performer right. must be, yeah, all the time, right? Right. right. Um, so when you're working, when we're, we're all working in this in this remote environment, um, and what I've uh, was curious about um, over this past year uh, teaching um, was my anxiety about how, how dance is a, is a visceral, visceral and spiritual practice for me, right. and that's how I go about it with my students. So whether we were going to have that actual spiritual visceral connection, I was, I was anxious about it and I was worried and I was sad about it. Um, and I've noticed in my experience with this particular class of freshmen, I have to say, and maybe it's because it's all they've known, is that we have created a connection and, and they've created a connection with each other. And so I love that your piece, Reach, is, is about that. And I wonder if, what in your research, working remotely, if you found sort of the same thing. Yes, I would agree. I think that this generation is so comfortable with virtual online um, work. And a lot of them are developing their careers online, essentially. So this is not new territory for them. I would say that it does cause all of us to get better with communication and using particular words that can get our point across because you know with technology there are there are these moments where there's glitches the internet goes out there, there there's freezing moments and we have to be ready for that 
So I've learned that relying so much on my physicality isn't always the best way to go. Sometimes it is taking a moment to really describe what I'm doing um, to make it more clear. But also at the same time, not allowing the online way of working to stop me from moving. Um, and I think that's what I've seen a lot in this freshman class is that they've made their homes a studio, which is amazing. Seeing Marley in their rooms and in their garages and just that fight, that, that hunger desire to keep moving is really amazing and inspiring. Well, absolutely. And, and um, the arts dance in, in particular, the resiliency of dancers yes. and dance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I am blown away by them. I get emotional thinking about them. Um, I hold them in very high regard for that. Um, so also when you're working with your own company, you have a method, it is called expand practice. Yeah. And so um, when you're when you're beginning to work with our dancers, as you did just the other day, um, working with our dancers, how is that um, walking them through a new method of working or a new uh, a method of working that you've been developing? Yes, it's really about vulnerability, honestly. So expand practice is inspired by many different things, but really I had a desire to let go of any sort of construct of moving. I, like I said, I started off in hip hop and then I transitioned into um, training in contemporary ballet. And I realized that I kind of lost the freedom of expression, especially in my face when I started dancing in more um, classical forms, if you will, styles of dance. And, when I started to choreograph, I realized that every time I was on stage, that that expression would come back naturally. I don't know why. I just kind of started geeking out and tweaking out in the face. And so that became something that I did every time I went into the studio. And with this expand practice, it became really a culture in this guided improvisation that we do each time that we meet for at least an hour, just feeling free to Yes, build our muscle, build our stamina, build our technique, also let go of our expression in our face, let go of the one style or one way of moving and really combine all of our information, each individual's information that they have, their own personal dance history can come out and expand practice. And so we develop strength in our core Really, that's that's our that's kind of our foundation and our base, and then everything else grows and expands from that space. So, I really see fun connection. to see. I I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's really really <laughs> exciting to see the USC students latch on to that. Even through Zoom, they had so much to offer in the guided improv that we started together, um, and I could see I can see their. Um, the variety of dance history just in the Zoom session that we had together. And so it's, it's, it's exciting. It's extraordinary to have, uh, and you used the word earlier, um, uh, hybridity, right? And it's what we are mm -hmm. after. Um, it's part of our motto at Kaufman is hybridity. Uh, and really the hybridity of um, hip hop or street practices and, um, and uh, um, classical ballet, contemporary, modern dance, uh, you know, forms, different forms coming together, making those uh, hybrid dance artists. Um, and uh, you, you uh, graduated from Cornish, right? Yes, I did. So uh, also, uh, Merce Cunningham graduated from Cornish, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad company to keep as a choreographer, right? right? Uh, shout out to Cornish. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so in, in your past practices, number one, um, in your hip hop experience, uh, was that um, in the studio or was it in the cypher? And how does that relate to your other practices? Yes, I trained at Debbie Allen Dance Academy. And so it was very much studio, um, you know, recitals, performances, training in hip hop there. 
But as I developed as a choreographer and really in expand practice with the TL Collective, the company, the hip, my hip hop training began to bleed into this cypher mentality where we were all improvising together, but then started to go one by one and really be in, inspired by each individual in the group. And so training as a, as a young um, dancer, I never ciphered much. I, I didn't really do the kind of one-off where we go one by one and share, but as I have grown and, and just been influenced by so many dance makers, we have ciphered more in, in the TL. And that has been really expanding to us as a, as a collective. It's one of the philosophies uh, at Kaufman that uh, has really changed mm -hmm. my teaching practices, and especially um, referring to, uh, especially to uh, our professor, Disabella Grimes, who yeah. introduced the idea to me yeah. in a very authentic way. Right. Um, and so our students are, are, are conversant in mm -hmm. the cipher, um, which is just a gift yeah. um, also. So um, I, you have a you have a longer connection with Kaufman School of Dance. I have to say, first of all, our students um, were talking about you from the moment I stepped onto the campus. Wow. Right. So these very first year, I was already hearing your name, so I was like, okay, all right, there's somebody having a moment. Um, and <laughs> um, and then uh, you you had a connection with a couple of our dancers and did. Um, uh, a shared performance with Ja Collective, uh, which is uh, Jordan Johnson and um, Aiden. Aiden Carberry, I'm sorry, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, our dancer Stephanie Dye works with you from time to time. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, are you guys still uh, um, in touch? Um, do you follow Ja Collective? Are you guys pals still? Oh, yes. Actually, I just did a project with Jaw Collective. They did a like one minute music video and they set a work on me. And so we are definitely still in conversation and communication. We, 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 we vibe off of each other. We actually have a long history. Um, Jordan and I went to Lockstep together. We went to high school together. So um, yeah, it's, it's great knowing them and Stephanie Dye as well. She, she dances with both of us. Jaw Collective and the TL Collective, and so it's it's great to have that connection. You guys are really forming this LA uh, contemporary hybridity yeah. in uh, contemporary dance culture. No, but it's really happening, yeah. right? And I've seen it. I've seen it happen other places, namely New York City. And so right now, I feel like there's room and there's breath, and you guys have an idea, a unique idea about movement and um, communication. Yes. It, it's when I, and I mean, it's really new. It's really in its beginning stages because when I moved back to LA in 2014, it wasn't, it wasn't as popular, you know, to see that sort of those lines blur. Um, what is commercial dance? What is concert dance? You're really seeing those questions come into play as more and more choreographers are working in both arenas, which is really, it's really great to see. It is, and I want to give a shout out to Eight Nine and to yes. Body Traffic, who really started creating a density yes. um, that started attracting uh, a dance thought. Right. Here. Right. 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 And right. now I feel like you guys are. It, it's going to be the LA contemporary style, which which I just think or form, which I is yeah. so exciting to me. It's unique. Yeah. It is very unique. Because <laughs> I'm a transplant. I'm a New York transplant. Yeah. <laughs> and body traffic. I dance for both of those companies, so it's it, it it's a part of my dance history, and definitely was inspired by you know Eight Nine being a Gaga based company, or or was they they've transitioned now um, as Danielle Dami has um, created her own movement language. But when I was dancing with them, that sort of improv based um, guiding warm up together movement. Um, which we were, I was essentially creating every day. And that really sparked a, a passion for me to, to launch my own work and, and company, so. I'm so grateful that you're here yeah. um, working with us. 
and our students. And uh, I looked forward to it being a long and fruitful relationship. I'm a fan oh. and I will always be in your corner. <laughs> what is next for you? Yes, so I'm continuously working with the TL Collective on film projects now. We currently just are doing a new film for the Getty actually, um, which is really exciting. So we're working on a new film for that. And then also I'm continuously doing freelance work. So freelance choreographing for um, new companies coming up. And I won't give away too much of that because I still have to do some more stuff. But, <laughs> but I am looking forward to, to doing more of that. As well. I'm looking forward to this premiere and continuing our relationship together. Um, thank you again, Michaela, for your time. Uh, we would like additionally to thank the Choi family, whose continued support uh, of the artists in residence and visiting artists at USC program. And now, please enjoy the showing of New York's Plus. Mm -hmm.